what you become by being an influencer nothing so we should have our priorities so in these fourfold practices that i have we have been discussing and understanding the first is the discernment discernment makes the intellect very clear there is a clarity there is a knowledge one beautiful you know women are always beautiful that's why you know beautiful women just attended the session uh before our current session so she says i was going to ask <clears throat> she was with her friend and uh, they are in the field of acting so her friend told that no 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 we i will not ask you to play a part so she was saying that she responded that okay no worries but later on when she was discussing with me she said that i said no worries so speech was good and uh, but when i returned home i was feeling so sad and reactive so where the discernment comes so eastern wisdom says you have this discernment at the physical level you did not slap that guy second discernment at the verbal level you spoke with all the sweetness no worries so you have to play discernment at the level of mind what is going on in the mind and there comes the role of this fashion so you see that how it works we all are seekers now so result is this fashion second who does all this discernment and this fashion intellect inside and a seeker outside if you are not a seeker you will say okay let me enjoy it and she further said you then you know what happened i came to my house and my mind said let me have a glass of wine from one glass to two glass to three glass why to escape the problem in the mind no we we take it it's okay but to escape from the problem it means we are not in the practice of this fashion so as you understand knowledge and behavior we are bridging the gap but not all the gap is bridged so we have the six treasures six treasure inner treasure of the mind sama relax calm equanimity of the mind is the first treasure we discussed in detail dama sensory control it is not a suppression we cultivate a new habit and replace old habit and we already covered the third one oparama oparama frees us from our likes and dislikes huh? that dictates our behavior and ultimately behavior leads to a particular attitude and a personality but last session we discussed what is to be done has to be done what is my duty there is no excuse at all i am a seeker i have to learn <laughs> not from me but i have to learn from within your mind did you understand i am a student i must perform the duty of a student i am a teacher i must perform the duty of a student i am a husband so when i am in front of my honey i must play my role otherwise problem 10 years ago soulmate now soulmate you see i get punished if i don't perform my duty i will be punished and if i perform just play my role so gradually what happens your behavior and attitude changes no i have to play my role in the world so that is what we did so understand again the discernment put intellect into service so
So the mind remains in the background with its impulsive nature, instinctive. So what happens? Power of discernment clears a lot of challenges of impulses. Then we move into discernment, dispassion. So dispassion and then six treasures. So now is the fourth treasure. The name of the fourth treasure is Titiksha. Titiksha, it has many words in English. Endurance, enduring sorrow and happiness, cold and heat. You know, enduring pairs of opposites at physical level, at mental level, at speech level, at emotional level. It's very hot today. Who doesn't know that it's not? It's very hot today in Arizona. <laughs> and next point is very impulsive. It's very hot today. Let me rush and do this and that. No. So our master says now with having a power of discernment and dispassion, I must have an endurance. Endurance, endurance at all four levels. Do you still remember I used to tell, there is a storm outside. Should I fight with the storm or should I rush inside the home and enjoy calmness? Physical example, definitely we should rush inside. Do you rush your mind inside when there is emotional opposites? Hate and love, likes and dislikes, pain and the pleasure. Do you rush your mind inside also? That is endurance. Because of our ego, how dare you say that? <coughs> Nature will teach you a good lesson. How dare you say that? Do you remember? Do you understand that point? It is the ego that flashes. How dare you say that? Nature will say to you everything. So endurance gives first the knowledge. It gives me the level of awareness and it maintains the calm. And then we say, it's okay. It's a part of the life. Someone will appreciate, someone will not. So what happens? It prevents the impulsive mind to enter into reaction, blame and complain game. <clears throat> we have to understand this. Now understand from a second point of view is nature nurtures one part is good, but forces us to endure. Why to endure to evolve? So endurance is for my own evolution. So let us become selfish. Why to harm others? Why to react? Or live your life. My master used to guide us. Take the, this word lightly. In relationship, in possessing something, in owning something. Take this word lightly. That is endurance. Here, that is the word tetiksha means. What that means? I take the word lightly. Endurance, if practiced at the conscious level, frees one from lamenting, reaction, agitation. See there. Another part that is also understand, you see that? We feel so much heat nowadays in our state, Arizona. Natural. That is why Kate does not want to be here. Better. Suffer in snow. Suffering is always there. Endurance has to be understood clearly. Now see that so much of heat and related to endurance. One example. 
it helps me to evolve and adapt myself so when you take it consciously so i recall what i wanted to speak these masters deliberately consciously deliberately consciously and peacefully they chose to go to the himalayas the snow clad himalaya the word himalaya means snow clad cladded mountains so they used to go there to check what is their endurance level that is the goal it is not that you know i went to the himalayas i am sitting in the cave cave is air conditioned and then i'm learning now that does not make a difference another part that is extremely again very important my master when i was in gangotri it was 12000 feet above the sea level and september and october it was very cold so he asked us that why don't you go to that monastery where the guy is guy is keeping his body until this level until the shoulder level only his head is outside the snow so we saw we pay our respect and we return and then he said what is your learning so i was very young i'm still young you know you don't go by my gray beard so <laughs> so so i said he seems to be a great master he said he is a crazy guy he is demonstrating his endurance to the people for earning money his goal is not right no but you offer always you know you ask us to offer milk and other stuff to him he said to keep my mind free what he is what he needs let us supply we have an abundance don't learn endurance in that you know i have tolerated you for so long our my dear friend bill gates 27 years of loveless life he tolerated that is not endurance understand be very clear this mind make the mind like very flexible let it jump immediately become aware drop that idea of reaction whether it is at the physical level whether it is at the mental level whether it is at huh the emotional level no when we follow that consciously it happens don't worry that it will not happen it happens at in your personal life in your professional life in your social life we will definitely encounter almost every day pairs of opposites likes and dislikes heat and cold pain and pleasure honor and dis- dishonor hate and love it is it is the nature of the world you see that so you are separating the world in which we think speak and work what will happen one day you will see that the world does not live in me i li- continue to live in this world huh? impulsive habitual and instinctive reaction only comes when this world lives in me think of it i always relax you wake up in the morning in rest you sleep in the rest you talk in the rest you walk in the rest think of that state dream vi- visualize what a kind of life you will be living and compare it with what you have and what you have not so haves and have nots do not create any challenges in your life see the beauty i believe you all are understanding 
that is the power. Uh, so the word tetiksha is also used and the word tapa is also used for this. Uh, you can say tapa tetiksha. So another master speaks of this from another text. He says, cheerfully enduring them by examining, by intellect. Arizona heat, examining by intellect. It is Arizona, heat must be there. Let me take care, finished. Means what? Cheerfully, no blame no complaint. To tell you my personal preference, I always like to, <laughs> I always like cold weather. <laughs> so the preference, preference should be understood clearly. It pertains at the physical level. So my preference should be replaced by the right now cheerfully. What is the process of this endurance? Take an example of a doctor. If you have a pain, you go, we go to the doctor, he examines where is the pain. He finds the focus of the pain, where it is, uh, in which particular organ, what are the symptoms. Similarly, we should examine these pairs of opposites. Now, I hate Kate. For example, Kate, example. Don't see. So I have to examine in my mind what is that hate? And you will describe, you will come to the conclusion it is purely impulsive. So by Tetiksha, you endure cheerfully in your personal life, in your professional life, in your social life. You will see your mind is totally free, totally free. We experience and we claim we have a pain in relationship, in business, in personal. You can deal with endurance. Reject the instinctive thought. I'm in pain, I'm a failure. My life is destroyed by relationship loveless life. Don't go there. It is not required for a seeker. Simple thing. Now you all are seekers. It is not required. Not at all required in my life. So it means I examine what is that instinctive, habitual, impulsive nature of the mind and then I endure it cheerfully. Do you know Socrates had a cruel wife? Huh? Cruel wife. And uh, he used to go to his house with his hundreds of students. I forgot his one of the great students that he had. He also became a great philosopher. So after 10 years of learning from the Socrates, his student asked him, should I marry? Socrates said, get married immediately. But then there was the next question from the student. I have been to your house hundreds of times and every time I went, your wife used to throw sometime the stick and sometime all the utensils. You get hurt, I got hurt. And you are talking of that I should leave, uh, I should get married. Power of endurance. All the principles are same. So Socrates smiled and he said, get married. If you, by chance, you get a good wife, your worldly life will be better. And you have already learned everything, so your spiritual life will also be better. Well, by chance, you get a wife like mine, it applies to husband also, you know. So bear with me, you know. 
I'm not uh, complaining. So if you get a chance that you get a wife like me, the world will get another Socrates. That is the power of endurance. Live your life lightly. That is the main message my master used to give. This is what the endurance of all the pain. Why? Because to find my real self, my mind must be clear, empty, clean, so that I should be able to follow the journey of the Eastern wisdom. What is the goal of Eastern wisdom? Just contemplate and reflect end of suffering of all kinds. Awakening to real self. That is the two goal. There is no third goal. Endurance of all the pains I just talked about and Eastern wisdom deals in detail. Those who are teachers in this profession, they know we say ad adibhatic, physical suffering, we say mental suffering, and we say suffering because of the natural calamities. You look at it, we just experience uh, Ida or Ida, we say Ida or Ida, I don't. Uh, endurance is the key. What happened, happened. We cannot control. We tried to save ourselves and still thousands of houses were gone. Huh? Perhaps so you see that endurance, natural calamities, physical suffering, mental suffering, three types of suffering. Another part that we should understand in this tetiksha and uh, or tapa or you can say uh, endurance. Sometimes what happens that we do not find a solution I gave you a couple of examples. People have sometime a naturally inbuilt level of endurance. That we have a problem and we don't find a remedy. And then we continue wasting our time. Have you seen and you might have met or you have read that sometime people suffer from cancer and uh, the doctor said six months and they have been still living. Endurance. So it is the endurance that changes the entire mental state. And when you change the mental state, it affects the body. That is another meaning of endurance, my friends. Another level of endurance is also to keep the mind pure. Why? Goal is end of suffering and awakening. Another level of endurance. Ah, you go to a friend and maybe a friend or anyone, you had a relationship, you had a lot of loss, you come back home, the mind says, let God kill him. Mind impulsively create that attitude. That is where we have to apply the endurance. I will not be unconscious in dealing with the people next time. That is endurance. Let God kill him. That is not endurance. We should not have that attitude. Why? Because it will create all these impressions again. So we have to, we have to prevent that. My master used to say, never curse anyone. That also comes under endurance. When we curse, when the mind says, now you are helpless. That state of the mind comes from the impulses. No murmuring, no cursing. See that tapa, tetiksha, the fourth level. Uh, fourth level. This is what, what is all about. 
architecture, endurance, or whatever you say. So what happens? My master, my Guruji used to say that you get an emotional immunity. I use the word immunity. Emotional immunity or you can say a psychological immunity you get in your life. What is psychological immunity? With the small things, you take it lightly. It doesn't affect you. Oh, you look crazy. Yes, I'm more crazy than you think. Finished. Emotional immunity, psychological immunity. Check. My friends, check. That if we don't have this immunity and somebody has said you something, you holding on that thought for days and weeks together. That is wasting your time. Do you see that? A beautiful word, you know, and I still remember psychological immunity, emotional immunity. Emotional and psychological immunity is one of the greatest benefit we get by endurance, by tetiksha, by uh, tolerating cheerfully, by understanding at the level of the intellect, it leads to dispassion and dispassion. I live in calmness, sensory control, and then operama. I'm getting free from the likes and dislikes. In that state, the endurance becomes such a great power. One woman, I remember the last point that uh, I was talking and uh, oh, there were all women there and in New Jersey, long back in Princeton. So one woman asked me, it doesn't mean that, you know, do you tolerate your husband? So she was coming out about her problem <laughs> impulsively. So by impulses, you don't know what you're going to say. <coughs> so I smiled and I said, I didn't say that. Who said that? You should tolerate your husband. No women should tolerate their husband. Now I have to calm her down. And then she realized what she spoke in front of everyone. Do you see that? There, then every <laughs> woman started talking about her. You see that? She poses herself to be so good. So, you know, psychological immunity. Do not split the personality, your attitude. That is extremely important in our journey of the Eastern wisdom. Yeah, you got it. So let us start our practice now, my friends. I'm learning to completely, yes. Now let us start our practice. Eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. The body is steady and mind is facing within. I believe you all know the, these three phrases. Steady body. Eyes are closed. Symbolic. Instantly your mind leaves the senses. Is that a sensory control? Think of it. Understand. Have that experience by yourself. And mind is facing within. One uh, handsome man from the New Jersey says that when our fire station blows the horn, I get disturbed during the practice. Sensory control, mentally you are doing namaste, 
moving the mind at the center of the palm. It is all the space. Why well, have been saying, we will find an answer that why you go back to the space again and again. Because the senses and the mind cannot see the real self. It is unknown. It will remain unknown to the sense organ and the mind. Still we want to know. That's real self, which is self-existent, self-evident, self-luminous. And that is why. Use the intellect, move into dispassion, in the state of the calmness, withdrawal of the senses inside, and then reflect on this endurance. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Let may there be well being for all, including those people in the past we reacted, we had likes and dislikes, including the nature. That helps us to settle into the state of the well being for all, including ourselves. You see, and we are doing the practice outside, we are eyes are closed, body is steady. That is what the active steps are. But internal steps are knowledge, discernment, dispassion, sama, dhamma, uparama, titiksha. Check it. When they all live in the field of awareness all the time, can you imagine what a wonderful life will be? Sarvesham shantir bhavatu. Sarvesham shantir. May there be peace for all. Why I say peace is our essential nature. I am reacting. I miss one of these treasures, including discernment and discretion. Can you think, can you start thinking in that way? That will take you to peace. Sarve sham shantir bhavatu. May there be peace for all. Sarve sham puranam bhavatu. May there be completeness in all. Is the mango tree looking at the apple tree? Jealous that mango tree is not like an apple tree. You see, it only present, it is only present in human mind. Is tiger jealous of the cows eating grass? And then ask yourself, why? Because we feel the sense of incompleteness in us. From where the mind? Now apply the power of discernment and dispassion. Come on, I am a human being. Sarve sham puranam bhavatu. I can see that, I can feel that, I can find out. Sarve sham mangalam bhavatu. May there be happiness or auspiciousness for all. You have to contemplate and reflect through the power of discernment in this way, in this mantra. You know, you have contemplated, you have done the knowledge practice, if I say so, even though knowledge is not a practice but for the sake of understanding. Now see, in that state, you are already comfortable. But we recheck, move the mind on all the joints, from the neck joint, shoulders, elbows, knees, ankles, toes. 
and experience sensation, comfort and steadiness. But your mind goes much deeper into the space. It wants to be there. And, uh, and now you can see that you are not impacted, influenced or dictated by whatever the thoughts are coming to your mind. Good, bad, high, low, past, present, future. No worries. Can you realize that state of the mind? By being carefree. Being carefree becomes 100% with the power of discernment, viveka, dispassion, samadama, uparati, and fourth one is the endurance. Even though a thought is being repeated again and again, something happened today in the morning, okay, I endure. So thoughts are still there, but you are calm. That is the secret of these steps, my friends. So we will continue with the, the breathing. A quick, short and gentle breathing from the rib case. Uh, keeping your focus inside the heart or the head. Start breathing. Enjoy that. Cheerfully endure. We have just received the lesson. We just understood the power of endurance. So tell them I now I'm going to check your power of endurance. Continue. Just continue. Endurance is there, so what difference it makes? You will know you have a perfect endurance or not. We are only doing for a couple of more minutes.
and stop it. Mind, just look at the breath. Equal flow of the breath. We understood that point. By repeat practice, the mind will naturally become aware of oh, whether the flow is equal or not. There is a sense of calmness and quietness. Now see from outside, it appears that this chest breathing, quick, short and the fast one, breathing seems to be challenging. But what is more challenging is to do the deep, silent and slow breathing only from the chest. Just do it. When you inhale, expand your rib case only, not the belly. From the collarbone to the last rib, observe the distance between the ribs during expansion. And during exhalation, you contract the entire rib case. Just a couple of minutes. And you will discover that doing a deep, silent and slow demands a little more attention and awareness. If it is there, the mind will enjoy. If you are not there, the mind will miss a particular breath. Why it misses? Because at the deeper level, mind is still impulsive. So we'll also understand the difference between the deep, silent, slow breathing, short, quick, and the gentle breathing. Deep. So when you're doing it deep and it is slow and it is silent, you see, look at the mind needs an extra awareness and then you feel the expansion of the entire rib case, contraction of the rib case. Deep, silent, slow, only into the rib case. We are releasing. It's a release. And the quick short in the gen gentle breathing that we did before is a temporary way to calm down the mind. Temporary phase. And this deep silent slow breathing helps us to go deeper. If it is the rhythmic breath, you will enjoy the state of the mind. If it is not rhythmic, you will understand in both ways we are benefited.
And I'll leave the step also. We'll go for again, you see, side by side. We are doing the three active steps based on their intensity to help the mind liberated from its own problem. So we will uh, inhale for 10 seconds, retain for 15 seconds and while retaining, looking inside we will recite Shantoham with awareness of the space within. Let us inhale deep, silent and slow. Retain the breath, Shanto hum. Mentally, you are saying, Shanto hum. Release the breath. Just wait, keep looking at the breath. So every from the first step to second to the third in these three breathing step, we are asking the mind to keep, go deeper. And all the three steps may act as an endurance. Inhale deep, silent and slow. Retain the breath. Shantu hum Shantu hum Release the breath So after releasing you will discover the mind continues to remain where it remains on the either on the breath or deeper inside. Both are okay. Again inhale deep, silent and slow. Retain the breath and Shantu hum. Shantu hum. And release the breath. Nothing. Inhale deep, silent and slow. Sritin the Russian to hum. Check that the mind is enjoying that. And when it enjoys, I said, endure cheerfully. Release the breath. Sometime if you do like this for a couple of minutes more, you will discover totally a different state. Inhale deep, silent and slow. Retain the breath. Sh 
Shantuham Shantuham And release the breath. We're not asking the mind to do something extraordinary like a person who buried himself until the shoulder. That is not what we want. I inhale deep, silent and slow again. Hold the breath, Shantuham, Shantuham. And release the breath. Every time you look inside the heart in the space, pick a point in the space. We'll also understand why I give the, such instructions or steps. So when you look at the point in the space, drop Shantoham. In knowledge says, oh, Shantoham, peace is like the infinite space. Be there, recheck. The is the mind moving still? No issue. Move it inside. Another milestone. Another milestone again and again. Until the mind merges with something. It merges with the real self. There is nothing except something. last step is moving the mind within, picking a point in the space and dropping Shantoham point, last step, moving the mind within from one milestone to the other, space is there, picking a point in the space and shanto, I'm dropping shanto, means I'm the peace, and then But we are aware, the mind merges, you will see even the thoughts are too far.
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside, know your experiences. Bring the hands down. How are you, David and Jerry? Um, very, very deep, very quiet, very deep. <clears throat> I felt my body falling forward <laughs> yeah. a few times, but it was very, very difficult to come out of it. Beautiful. That is the experience. How are you, Jerry? Sir, I'm good. It's nice to be back. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was just a good space. Just a really nice, good space. Um, um, pretty quiet. I, at the end, it was very heavy. My body, as I was coming out, the body was very heavy. Yeah, yeah. And almost like absorption and... Uh, uh, a kind of loss of awareness of the body and still maintaining awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good point. Very good. Deeper experience. How are you, Kate? Morning. Uh, thank you. Um, quiet, still, spacious. Good. You see, that is what is happening, that when we live into that knowledge, discernment, dispassion, the first three treasures and the fourth one helps us to endure keep the mind within and that gives a beautiful experience how are you Lara? it was good um, I had a lot of like heart space like a lot of fluctuation kind of in the heart with the breathing practice and then when we let go for a moment I think I saw the Buddha upside down for just like a flash of a second and then it went. <laughs> so that was kind ah, of fun. That's good. Yeah, it's still a deeper experience. That is wonderful. How are you, Vaibhav? Sir, I'm calm and relaxed. It was very peaceful. Yeah. Does your honey also say that you are calm? <laughs> No. Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> it's a tricky question. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. How are you, Ashok? I know about Ashok, so I will not ask him. <laughs> I'm good, sir. <laughs> Going into peace slowly and slowly, but it is progressive. <laughs> progressive. Good. Thank you. Good. How are you, Internet? I'm good. That was very uh, peaceful, relaxing, a lot of heaviness in my body. It uh, very quick. Very quick. Yeah, yeah. That's another uh, understanding that you went deeper, deeper. Very good. You see that just keep in your mind discernment, dispassion, sama, relaxed and calm when the, you take the word lightly. But who doesn't uh, support this statement? Sense organ with the mind, with its impulsive nature. It pulls me out. So there comes the Dhamma. Uh, we just talked about replacing the habit. The third one is Uparama. So now we deal with the likes and dislikes at the knowledge level that is the third treasure practically with endurance at the fourth level. 
you see the sequence. So remember this sequence and see whenever these challenges come, apply that and then see the result. That is all for today. Be happy and keep smiling. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Rich, I have a quick... Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, Kate. You have a question. I have a quick question. Oh, a good question. Oh. Uh, as we were practicing, uh, you know, kind of in... I, I think it was when we were dropping so hum, or maybe it was even before that. I saw a lot of purple, like violet purple. Ah, yeah. Is there any... Is yeah. there any point to colors? You can say you have deepened the practice of sama that is very deep and relaxed and calmness. So the mind perceives these colors. So it's a de definitely a deeper state. A deeper state. We'll understand step by step how far these colors and visions, including what Lara experienced the Buddha, has to do with our higher states of meditation. Namaste. 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 I like the cow and the tiger. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I like the cow eating the grass and the tiger being jealous <laughs> of eating the grass. And I was thinking the tiger wants the rabbit, so he's happy that the cow is eating the grass so he can see the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> not jealous. <laughs> we are jealous on everything. <laughs> why you have this nose, why I don't have it. Unnecessary. We're all, we all are unique. We all have a gift. We are crazy if we think like this. We are unique if we follow the intellect which is given to us uh, free to, to use it, to make a choice. Should I make a choice not to be jealous? Yes, I can make a choice. What I am, I am. Thank you, God. You gave me this human birth. You gave me the freedom to think. Why should I be jealous to Lara? Simple. It is so simple. But we don't leave it. We don't leave it. Oh, he has this. I don't have it. She has this. and she... That causes <coughs> millions of impressions. And that is the reason we are so fully busy. Because mind is busy. Mind doesn't have time to think. You see what I have, you know, simple say, if I see you, uh, today I have uh, hardly four sessions. So after four sessions, I'm free. Four sessions plus two hours. Because the role of a teacher is to think and contemplate what I gave last week and what I should give to uh, this week. Not going mechanical. No, oh, no, I just, you know, stopped that recording. So once I'm 100% clear, discernment, impulsive mind pulls me back. Okay, let it pull back. I'm taking the word lightly. So the mind will lose that intensity to remain impulsive and habitual. How simple the logical understanding. And then comes you have Sama, Dhamma, Uparama and these four treasures. We find as if the life has taken an about turn, 360 degree. Then we realize what is the importance of becoming a seeker. Anyhow, not too much of gossip. Thank you, Lara, for raising this. Yes. Thank you. I thought of this cow example in the morning and I said, oh, that is a good example. It that was be. a great example. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.